Welcome to Believer's Channel. I'm Pastor Russ. Today I'm going to be talking about you must be born again. And before we get into that, we're going to remind you that there's a thumbs up button at the bottom that helps our ministry when you hit it. And then there's a subscribe button that really helps us because it opens up doors. It opens up more ways for our ministry to get out to people. It doesn't cost you a penny to hit that subscribe button. It's free. And we just, you'll be blessing us. And we just ask that you hit that. And now let's get started. You must be born again. Nicodemus, he was a ruler of the Jews. And he came to Jesus in secret one night. Because he wanted to know what it takes to get into heaven. He knew that Jesus was a special person sent by God. And that's the way he's seen it. So in John 3.3, 3, Jesus gets asked that question and by Nicodemus. And he says to Nicodemus, he says, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus is perplexed. He says, how can an old man crawl back into his mother's womb? He says, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. We have to tear this apart just a little bit because it's a little confusing in the spot where it says, uh, unless you're born of water. Uh, I went to the Hebrew Bible to see if they had a little clearer picture. And the Hebrew Bible used the word from, from water. And that made a little more sense. So I went to my wife's Bible. Uh, she got through Joyce Meyer's ministry. And they put from in parentheses next to of. So with the word from, we can get a clear picture. You have to be born from water and the spirit. Uh, he, you know, you can't enter the kingdom unless you are. So here's the question. We're talking about baptism. And the question is, not everybody gets baptized before they go to heaven. Baptism, baptizing is a form of uh, demonstrating your faith, showing people that you've accepted God. Baptizing, by baptizing means you've been, you've died to the old you, the old man. See, the proper way to baptize is dunking into water. Your whole body goes underwater, and that's a form of death. And when it's brought back up, you're born again. So he's referring to baptism here. But I look at this and I see, well, there's the thief on the cross, which I compare everything, I think, to that, because he, he up until that point, he didn't know Jesus. He didn't have any kind of relationship with him up until the moment he was hanging on the cross. And he reaches out and says to Jesus, remember me when you get to your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus says, surely I say to you, on this day you will be in my kingdom with me. Now Jesus died first, he went to heaven and he made a place for the thief on the cross. It's called paradise. But the thief on the cross had never been baptized. So I found a verse in 414 where, where Jesus says, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. Jesus is giving the water here. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. All those who accept Jesus at the last moment, they go to heaven. 
He gives them the water of everlasting life. So baptism, cults get their idea of baptism from this verse uh, in, three, three, uh, in chapter 3, 6, or actually I should say chapter 3, 3, uh, and 3, 5. They're getting from that that you have to be baptized to get into heaven. They get from that that we'll baptize you in our church because that'll be the only way you can go to heaven. And that's all, that's all wrong. It's all lies. The bottom line is baptism is a form of death uh, and a form of rebirth. The old man dies to his sin. The new man is raised in Jesus. That's baptism. You don't use baptism as a, as a tool to get people to come to your church and join it and say, this is the only way to heaven. Uh, that's not so. And Jesus points out in 4.14, uh, chapter 4.14, that he is living water. He gives a person living water. It turns into a fountain inside of them. In other words, you get so full of Jesus, you can't wait to go out and tell others. You're like a fountain of water spraying all over the place. That's what it's about. You must be born again. You must accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Jesus is the only way to heaven. He says in the Bible, through me, it's through me that you get to the Father. No other way. He also says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So say this little prayer with me. If you've never said uh, a salvation prayer, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, say this little prayer with me. If you have accepted him, say it with me to renew yourself and get rid of the sins you have on your life. Just say, Father God, I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you. I've sinned against myself. Father, I believe what Jesus did for me on the cross. I believe will save my life and my soul. I believe his blood washes me clean and makes me white as snow. I believe his blood washed my body, soul, and spirit. I ask right now, Father, that you forgive me for my sins, that I may be with you someday in heaven. In Yeshua Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you said that prayer with me, your sins are behind you. Uh, if you've asked Jesus to forgive you in the past, any sins you've had since then is gone. Your salvation is secure. Look forward. Look forward. Don't look back. Don't look back into your sin and, and, and pick it up again. Your sins are washed away. You're a new man in Jesus. You're a new man, a new woman. You're, you're, you're new in Jesus. Know that he died for you. And it's a free gift. And you have accepted that gift today. Now I'd like to bless you. May God bless you. May he keep you. And may his face shine upon you. And may his countenance be with you every day. In Yeshua Jesus' name, amen. You have a blessed day. God bless.